Good evening. Welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Usma Jafri. Here are the top stories we are tracking for you on Friday, the 5th of August. India's opposition Congress party protests against inflation, unemployment, several lawmakers detained. Pakistan economically enslaved by IMF, Lamans Prime Minister Shahbaz Sharif. And Taliban leader Anas Haqqani says closed girls' schools in Afghanistan not permanent. And now for all the details. India's main opposition Congress leader Rahul Gandhi, along with several other party lawmakers, was detained during nationwide protests by the party against inflation and unemployment. The Congress has been in protest mode ever since Rahul Gandhi and his mother, party president Sonia Gandhi, were summoned in the National Herald money laundering case. The Congress leader had kick-started the protests by equating the ruling BJP government with a dictatorship. India's main opposition Congress party on Friday held nationwide protests against rising inflation, unemployment and recent hike in goods and services tax, with party leader Rahul Gandhi equating Prime Minister Narendra Modi's BJP-led government with a dictatorship. Dressed in black dresses, senior Congress leaders and workers tried to march towards the presidential palace and get out the PM's residence in New Delhi, but were detained by police soon after. Earlier addressing a press conference, Rahul Gandhi, who was also detained, had said that the Congress was forced to adopt the agitation route as the government, despite consistent demands, refused to discuss price rise and unemployment in the parliament. He also blamed the ruling BJP has hijacked all institutions of India's democratic structure. Protests were also held by Congress workers in other major cities. The Congress has been in protest mode ever since Rahul Gandhi and party president Sonia Gandhi were summoned by the Enforcement Directorate in the National Herald money laundering case. The Congress has maintained the probe is yet another way to restrain the opposition. Senior BJP leader Ravi Shankar Prasad said, Rahul Gandhi's remarks were irresponsible and said Congress should stop demeaning India's institutions to safeguard their corruption and misdeeds. The Reserve Bank of India, RBI's key policy repo rate was raised by 50 basis points on Friday, the third increase in the current cycle to cool stubbornly high inflation that has remained above the central bank's tolerance ban for six straight months. The Monetary Policy Committee, MPC, in a unanimous decision, raised the key lending rate or the repo rate to 5.40%. RBI Governor Shakti Kantada said, Inflation is projected to remain above the upper tolerance level of 6% through the first three quarters of 2022-23, entailing the risk of destabilizing inflation expectations and triggering second round effects, the MPC said. The standing deposit facility rate and the marginal standing facility rate were adjusted higher by the same quantum to 5.15% and 5.65% respectively. Spiking prices for food and fuel have hammered consumer spending and darkened the near-term outlook for India's economic growth, which slowed to the lowest in a year in the first three months of 2022. In news from Pakistan, Pakistan's Prime Minister Shahbaz Sharif has said the country is economically enslaved by the International Monetary Fund and lamented a delay in disbursement of a much-awaited bailout package. Pakistan's reserves have dropped to dangerous levels of 8.5 billion US dollars, covering just less than two months of imports. Pakistan's Prime Minister Shehbaz Sharif on Thursday questioned the kind of independence enjoyed by the country when the nation is economically enslaved by the International Monetary Fund IMF. Pakistan's political crisis, depleting foreign reserves, delay in IMF's loan disbursement and rupee devaluation have had a hard-hitting impact on its economy. Speaking to reporters in flood-affected Peshawar, PM Sharif said 
the coalition government would take decisions that would steer the country out of every crisis as it faces uphill tasks on several fronts. The Pakistan's coalition government reached a staff level agreement with the IMF in July after months of deeply unpopular belt tightening, elimination of fuel and power subsidies, and introduction of measures to broaden tax base. IMF official Esther Perez Ruiz said earlier this week that Pakistan had met the last condition for increase in the petroleum development levy and a meeting of IMF board tentatively planned for late August could release the bailout funds once adequate financing assurances were confirmed by Pakistan. Moving on. Former Prime Minister of Pakistan administered Kashmir, Raja Farooq Haider Khan, has raised objection over the proposed 15th constitutional amendment by Pakistan government. He said it will curtail rights and powers of the illegally occupied region and vowed to resist any such attempt. Raja Farooq Haider Khan, the former Prime Minister of Pakistan, administered Kashmir, has opposed the proposed 15th constitutional amendment that he said will curtail few rights and powers of illegally occupied region. Khan said that the amendment proposed by Pakistan's federal government is aimed at recreating defunct overarching Kashmir Council, which will deem to hold the Kashmiri political parties as anti-democratic. He vowed to resist any such attempt aimed at divesting the territory and its people of rights. Locals blame Pakistan has misruled the region for more than seven decades. People of the region are denied fundamental rights and are meted out with severe brutality if they demand for it. They say there is a stooge government in the region, but it only helps Islamabad fill its treasuries through economic depredations. Pakistan's foreign ministry has rejected reports that its airspace had been used for a U.S. drone strike in Kabul that killed Al-Qaeda chief Ayman al-Zawahiri. The Taliban has said that its government had no information about Zawahiri entering and living in Afghan capital and warned the United States to never repeat an attack on Afghan soil. Pakistan's Foreign Ministry spokesperson Asim Iftikhar Ahmed during the weekly press briefing on Thursday categorically rejected reports that the country's airspace was used for a United States drone strike in Kabul that killed Al-Qaeda chief Ayman al-Zawahiri. The United States killed Zawahiri with a missile fired from a drone while he stood on a balcony at his Kabul hideout on Sunday, U.S. officials said. In the biggest blow to the militants since U.S. Navy SEALs shot dead Osama bin Laden more than a decade ago. During his previous statement on August 2nd, the spokesperson issued a wake statement on the U.S. drone strike, saying that the Islamabad stands by countering terrorism in accordance with international law and relevant U.N. resolutions. He made no mention of Pakistan's airspace not being used. The Taliban on Thursday said the government had no information about Zawari entering and living in the Afghan capital, Kabul, and warned the United States to never repeat an attack on Afghan soil. Zawari, an Egyptian doctor, was closely involved in the September 11, 2001 attacks on the United States and was one of the world's most wanted men. His death in Kabul raises questions about whether he received sanctuary from the Taliban, who had assured the United States as part of a 2020 agreement on the withdrawal of U.S.-led forces that they would not harbor other militant groups. The Taliban's return to power in August 2021 unleashed a wave of concern among Afghan women. Several restrictions have been imposed since then, including barring adolescent girls from receiving education. Islamic Emirate leader Anas Haqqani in an interview with the local media has said that the closure of girls' schools will not be permanent and that the Islamic Emirate will resolve it after completing other duties. Prominent Taliban leader Anas Haqqani on Thursday said that the closure of girls' schools in Afghanistan will not be permanent and that the Islamic Emirate will resolve it after completing other duties. 
In an interview with Tolo News, Hakani assured that all the issues, including reopening of girls' schools, will be resolved. The closure of girls' schools above sixth grade in the past year has raised concerns inside and outside of Afghanistan. International organizations have urged the government to reopen them as soon as possible. The Taliban went back on an announcement that all schools would open in March, leaving many girls who had turned up at their high schools in tears and drawing criticism from Western governments. Several Islamic Emirate officials have repeatedly made promises to reopen schools, but these promises have not yet been fulfilled. The Taliban cited a technical issue and a lack of standardized uniforms for students around the country for the move. The Taliban seized power for a second time in Afghanistan last August as international forces backing a pro-Western government pulled out. Critics say women's rights have since been undermined with new curbs on their clothes, movement and education, despite earlier Taliban vows to the contrary. In news from Sri Lanka, Sri Lanka's interim budget will be presented to Parliament in the first week of September, President Ranil Vikramasinghe has said, as his government is working to pull the country out of crippling economic crisis. In his first major address to Parliament since his inauguration earlier this week, he called for unity to overcome the crisis. Sri Lanka President Ranil Vikramasinghe said an interim budget will be presented to Parliament in the first week of September and through the interim budget, he will provide several concessions and relief to the people. Vikramasinghe made this observation when he met the leaders of Sri Lanka Freedom Party and the group of Sri Lanka Podujana Paramona lawmakers at the President's office to discuss the establishment of an all-party government, the President's media division said in a statement on Thursday. Reports suggest that the crucial talks on the possibility of forming an all-party government will begin from Friday evening. Vikramasinghe on Wednesday called for unity to overcome the country's crippling economic crisis in his first major address to parliament since his inauguration. The island nation of 22 million people is facing its worst financial crisis since independence from Britain in 1948 with its foreign exchange reserves at record lows and the economy better by the COVID-19 pandemic and a steep fall in government revenue. Discussions with the International Monetary Fund, IMF, for a four-year program that could provide up to $3 billion would resume in August, Vikram Singh told lawmakers. He also said that the constitutional amendments were required to curtail presidential powers, indicating he would meet a key demand of protesters who forced out his predecessor, Gotabaya Rajapaksa. Meanwhile, U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken described the recent turmoil in Sri Lanka as an opportunity when he met Ali Sabri, Sri Lanka's newly appointed foreign minister in Cambodia on Thursday. The two men met on the sidelines of Southeast Asia's ASEAN summit in Phnom Penh. Sabri, who has been Sri Lanka's finance minister and justice minister before his most recent appointment, expressed his gratitude for the support the United States has shown to the country. Rural women in parts of India's northern Himachal Pradesh are helping to preserve the environment by making sacred rakhi threads using pine needles as the sibling festival of Raksha Bandhan is just around the corner. They said they are elated to make the threads that signify bonding between sisters and their brothers and this is also giving them a chance to financially be self-dependent. As the sibling festival of Raksha Bandhan is just round the corner, rural women in parts of India's northern Himachal Pradesh state are contributing in preserving the environment by making rakhis, sacred threads to signify bond between sisters and brothers using dried up pine needles. According to reports, 11% of forests of the pine trees were damaged in forest fires in the state. And following that, this initiative was taken up by NGO Karva Society and the Himachal Pradesh Institute of Public Administration to train these women in this craft. The women said they are elated to contribute as they are also getting a chance to be financially self-dependent. Rakhi ka tihwar a raha hai, humne pines ki rakhi a bina hai hai, sabhi ladies e groups mein bina rahi hai, hum lagwa 40 mahi lai hai isme groups mein. Aur hume har ek basic training aur advanced training humare hippa se aya. Raksha Bandhan is celebrated on the full moon day of the monsoon month of Shravan, according to Hindu calendar. 
This year, the festival falls on 11th of August. Well, that's all we have for you from South Asia this evening. Now our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash SAsianewsline and follow us on Twitter at SAsianewsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We will see you same time next week. Have a great weekend. Good night.